Hey everyone, so in our last video, we uh, took our current user that was on local storage and used the token on them in order to create an authorization header. So this provides a decent amount of security. So if a hacker wants to come in and make changes, they have to have this token. But uh, there was a little bit of pushback on Reddit and a couple users pointed out that this will not be enough security for a lot of types of websites. So uh, the issue is if a hacker does get access to that token, well, then they can do whatever that user can do. This is an issue with all token authentication systems, but the reason that local storage is less good than, for example, cookies, is because cookies can come with an expiration date, whereas local storage is gonna stay in local storage until the user deletes the data, or they click sign out and delete it programmatically. So if a hacker gets a hold of your computer with your tokens in your local storage, then they'll have access to whatever you have access to. Meanwhile, if they get a hold of your computer and you have cookies stored, then they'll have access to whatever you have access to until the cookies expire. So what are our options? Well, if you want to be more secure, uh, the first thing would be to have an expiring cookie. And the second thing, you could do a refresh token authentication flow so that it you can be more aggressive with the expiring cookies. So in this article on the Hasura blog, they recommend uh, expiring every 15 minutes, but then having an automatic refresh flow so the users don't have to actually log in every 15 minutes. Needless to say, this is fairly complex. And before you go and start trying to implement it, let's take a step back and talk about security in general. What are the risk factors for you getting hacked? So the first is the desirability of your target, how motivated people are to get into your website and get access. Second is the breadth of user access or the attack surface. So how many points can people get in and what can they do once they're there? And third is insufficient security. That is specifically insufficient security for the needs of your site. So let's go over these one by one. So motivation. If you have credit card numbers, uh, then yeah, people are going to want to get into your site. Uh, that's if they can make a living off of breaking into your site, someone will. So don't store credit card numbers on your site. Second, political content. If you have that there, then there will be a sub-faction of people who think they're heroes for hacking your site. And if you have powerful rivals that could get a business advantage by uh, hacking into your site, I should say powerful and unscrupulous rivals, uh, then you'll have a greater need to protect yourself. So the thing you want to ask yourself is, who would want to get into my site and why? And what would they gain once they're there? And of course, you always have to have some level of security because there are people who would just hack into sites for fun. So you got to keep them out. But the serious players uh, usually have a motivation. All right, now the second factor to consider is user access. So what can an average signed-in user do? In the case of a screencast site, the average signed-in user can watch premium screencasts, they can subscribe and unsubscribe, and uh, maybe comment if there's a forum. So none of those are a huge deal. Uh, meanwhile, if you have something that is, you know, a user that is running a power plant or something, you're going to want some real serious security because if someone gets in to one of those regular users, that's a bad thing. All right, so what can an admin do? And now in this case, even 
for something relatively low security, like a screencast site, an admin can do a lot. They can do they can unsubscribe and subscribe all the users. They can, you know, delete all the videos, change the videos so they say weird things. So even on sites with relatively low security needs, letting someone get a hold of an admin account is a really bad idea. So you also need to take into account how many people are admins. So if it's just you and a couple other trusted people, then you just make sure that if your computer gets stolen or one of your trusted associates has their computer stolen, they tell you. And then you can take appropriate security measures. And you'll need that uh, if you have cookies or if you have uh, a local storage. Unless you have a super aggressive uh, cookie expiration policy. All right, finally, we get to what everyone likes to talk about, which is insufficient security. So you have to ask, how much does your site need? And what trade-offs are you willing to make? Those trade-offs typically come in two forms. One is inconvenience for the user. If you're getting logged off every 15 minutes or even every month, that's inconvenient. And if you have to uh, do a two-factor authentication, so grab your phone every time you want to sign in, that's also inconvenient. But in exchange for that inconvenience, you get increased security. And you can also make trade-offs in terms of developer time. And so if you have a site with high security needs, then it's absolutely worth it to make those trade-offs. If you're uh, having one with lower security needs, then you've got to start looking at it. And you see this all the time in physical security. Apple's corporate campus is going to have a lot more physical security than a grocery store because Apple has more stuff they want to protect Therefore, they can have security that is inconvenient for their employees and expensive for the company because for them it's worth it. Meanwhile, your average grocery store, if they implemented those security measures, would drive everyone away and they would go out of business really soon. Plus, it just wouldn't be worth it in terms of money, even if they didn't drive everyone away. Okay, with all that said, what are my recommendations? The first is to use at least token authentication. I mean, if you don't use that, you're just asking for trouble. And if you have stuff that you really want to protect, probably a good idea to have a cookie that expires at some point. Then uh, use cross-site scripting precautions on user-generated content if you have any. If you don't have much user-generated content, then uh, you still need to look into it that's one of those basic things that every site should have. Uh, third, don't store credit card numbers. Uh, you're just like hanging bags of money out your window if you're doing that. So don't make yourself a high value target unless you need to. Then if you are a high value target, beef up your security and maybe even hire an expert. Finally, have a damage mitigation plan. So if someone does get in, because no security is perfect, then figure out what you're going to do to keep the worst from happening. So I hope that's helpful and appropriately nuanced. Remember, if you are a high value target, like really high value, hire an expert. I'm not that expert. I'm an expert in many things. Security is not one of them. But uh, find one and hire them. And with all that said, we will be back to our regularly scheduled uh, app creation very soon. I'll see you then.